This year, our Blueprint Leader Tips are going to focus on you, the leader. This is not just about giving you tools and practical tips on what to do in ministry. It's about giving you an understanding of who you need to be as a leader in order to be effective in your ministry efforts. Who you are as a leader will ultimately be more important than what you do. In many ways, who you are is going to shape what you do in your ministry programming. So this year, we're going to focus on some important tips on becoming a leader of men. Now, I'm going to assume that because you are in leadership of ministry to men, you actually want to make a difference that matters for eternity. And this first tip is the most critical foundational reality that must exist in your own life as a leader. To be an effective leader of men, you have to be a man who is abiding in Jesus Christ yourself. In John chapter 15, Jesus said this, Apart from me, you can do nothing. Think about that word, nothing. You may be the most gifted leader in the world. You may even have the largest men's group in your city. But none of it really matters or is even going to be effective if you are not abiding in Christ yourself. You may have the greatest strategy that you've ever seen, but none of it matters if you are not abiding in Christ. You and I can only be the godly leaders that we want to be if we are abiding in Christ. So what does that mean? Well, we get an idea of that in John chapter 15, verses 9 and 10. In these verses, Jesus gives us a picture that it's kind of like two wings of an airplane. First of all, he tells us to abide in his love, to take a breath and rest in the truth that nothing you do is going to make God love you more or less than he already does. To rest in the truth that you are loved by God just because he is God and not because of any service or activity that you're giving to him. This will help you in those moments when you feel like a failure as a leader. When people won't follow you or listen to you, a leader who is abiding in Christ is not going to be consumed by the sense of failure. He's going to know in his own heart that he's still loved by God. When you abide in God's love, then you love spending time with him. You enjoy reading his word because you want him to speak to you. You enjoy praying because you know that he loves to hear from you and you love to talk to him. Abiding in his love is going to mean that you're a leader who is growing in prayer and is listening to God through his word. This wing of the airplane is really especially important for men who have a personality that is kind of like mine. You're driven, you're consumed with accomplishing more. Rest and abide in the love of God for you as his son. The second wing of the airplane is found in verse 10 where we're told to keep his commands. Now, this might sound obvious, but it's not often intentionally practiced. We easily cherry pick and choose the commands of Jesus that we like, and we ignore the ones that really don't fit with our own likes or personality. And this second wing is a call to make sure that we ourselves are serious about being disciples of Jesus. You see, it's one thing to call others to be disciples of Jesus, but are you growing in your own willingness to allow Jesus to shape your life? When was the last time that you changed something in your life just because you know that Jesus commanded you to do something? Look at how you use your time and your money and and just compare that to what Jesus says. Look at your attitudes towards your enemies and towards sinners and compare that to what Jesus says. How are you doing in keeping the commands of Jesus and allowing him to continue to shape you where you need to change? Two wings of an airplane, abiding and obeying. You can do nothing apart from Jesus, so abide in him and let him work through you as a leader.